In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Today, this local church of St. Augustine will witness the ordination of its new chief shepherd, Father Eric Holmeyer. Eric, the priests, deacons, the men and women of consecrated life, and all the members of Christ's faithful welcome you today with great joy, as does the now Bishop Emeritus of St. Augustine, Bishop Felipe de Jesus Esteves. And Bishop Esteves, thank you for your years of service to the people of the 17 counties that make up the Diocese of St. Augustine. Bishop Esteves, you can take some holy pride in your stewardship of this diocese and your work here for the church has borne much good fruit, not the least of which is a goodly number of priestly vocations. We welcome the family of our bishop-elect, and he does have a large extended family. We welcome especially his parents, Deacon Thomas Fulmeyer and his wife Sharon, his sister and his brothers and their spouses and their children. The deacon and his wife have been very generous to the church. One son, Eric, is to be now ordained a bishop, and just last month another son, Jason, was ordained a permanent deacon back home in Little Rock. Welcome also to all the bishop-elect relatives and friends who have traveled here from Arkansas and other places. A special welcome to the Bishop of Little Rock, Bishop Anthony Taylor, and of course, we welcome Archbishop Christophe Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio, and the other bishops who will join me in laying hands on Father Eric, ordaining him bishop and successor of the apostles. We also welcome our civic leaders that are participating at this Mass today, uh, and also the members of other religious communities that join us today. And so now, let us place ourselves in the presence of our God and acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Antes de comenzar estos sagrados misterios, reconozcamos nuestros pecados, pidamos al Señor perdón. Lord Jesus, you invite us to be your disciples. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to proclaim the kingdom of God. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call the faithful to a life of holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who out of the abundance of your untold grace alone chose to set your servant and priest Eric over your church of St. Augustine this day, grant that he may carry out worthily the office of bishop and under your governance in all things, he may direct by word and example the people entrusted to his care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Lectura del profeta Isaías El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí Porque me ha ungido Y me ha enviado para anunciar La buena nueva a los pobres A curar a los de corazón quebrantado A proclamar el perdón a los cautivos La libertad a los prisioneros y a pregonar el año de gracia del Señor, el día de la venganza de nuestro Dios. El Señor me ha enviado a consolar a los afligidos, los afligidos de Sión, a cambiar su ceniza en diadema, sus lágrimas en aceite perfumado de alegría y su abatimiento en cánticos. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. victory <clears throat> known, has revealed his triumph in the sight of the nations.
Declare among the nations, the Lord is King. The world will truly stand fast, never to be shaken. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord nor of me, a prisoner for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed and am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. Take as your norm the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Lord appointed 72 others, whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you. For the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, Eat what is said before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. En aquel tiempo, Jesús designó a otros 72 discípulos y los mandó por delante de dos en dos a todos los pueblos y lugares a donde pensaba ir y les dijo la cosecha es mucha y los trabajadores pocos rueguen por tanto al dueño de la mies que envíe trabajadores a sus campos pónganse en camino yo los envío como corderos en medio de lobos no lleven ni dinero, ni morral, ni sandalias. Y no se detengan a saludar a nadie por el camino. Cuando entren en una casa, digan que la paz reine en esta casa. Y si allí hay gente amante de la paz, el deseo de paz de ustedes se cumplirá. Si no, no se cumplirá. Quédense en esa casa, coman y beban de lo que tengan, porque el trabajador tiene derecho a su salario. No anden de casa en casa, en cualquier ciudad donde encuentren y los reciban, coman lo que les den. Curen a los enfermos que haya y díganles, ya se acerca a ustedes el reino de Dios. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Most Reverend Father, the Church of the Diocese of St. Augustine asks you to ordain this priest, Eric Thomas Pohlmeyer, to the responsibility of the Episcopate. Have you a mandate from the Holy Apostolic See? We have. Let it be read.
Your Excellency, Archbishop Wenski, Metropolitan Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Miami. Your Excellency, Bishop Felipe Esteves, the Saint of Augustine. You know, I've been told, uh, Bishop uh, Felipe, that uh, I should pronounce the word Augustine in the way you pronounce it, but I've tried. I'm not sure that I will manage. <laughs> Your Excellency, Bishop Anthony Taylor of Little Rock, co-consecrators, the two, my brother as bishops, bishops, and auxiliary bishops, Father Abbott, as we come together today in this great Paris Church of St. Joseph to celebrate the ordination and installation of Bishop-elect Eric Paul Meyer, we first, in the name of the Holy Father, all give thanks to Bishop Esteves for his leadership this past 11th year. I check that it is correct. Eh? We are especially grateful, Bishop Felipe, for the care and concern that you have shown for this beautiful diocese. You have indeed earned the love and respect of your people for your devotion and dedication. Thank you again. This could last for the rest of the day, isn't it? <laughs> Bishop Paul Meyer, Bishop-elect, we want to give particular recognition to your loving parents. We know that you were born in Colorado and raised in Paris, Arkansas, <laughs> where your family lives today. We acknowledge your father, who is already a permanent deacon. Greetings, deacon. <laughs> you know, you know the meaning of ordained service for the church. And we congratulate your brother, Jason, he is there, you know, just at the corner, no? for becoming a permanent deacon on June the 25th, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Bishop Paul Mayer, you come to us today as a man of many experiences and diverse talents throughout all of your 24 years as a priest. You have studied mechanical engineering, imagine, philosophy, dogmatic theology in Rome, and spiritual theology. Besides serving already as a pastor of a number of churches, I think there are five, if I am correct, your leadership in faith formation and di diaconate formation and continual education for the clergy has enriched the lives of both the ordained and the lay members of the Church of Little Rock. This will be of great assistance to you in your new ministry as bishop. You have been quite productive and appreciated in your service as a consultant of the Diocese of Little Rock, a member of the Presbyteral Council, the Personal Board and the Clergy Welfare Board, as well as theological consultant for the Arkansas Catholic newspaper. You are to be commended for your mastery of the Spanish language so as to better serve a wider range of God's people. It is no wonder that you have, been, you have chosen for your episcopal motto, first seek the kingdom of God, because God is so involved in everything that you are about and because you see the work of God as the priority in your ministry, especially now as the ordinary of the Saint Augustine, Augustine, Diocese. We know that 
your background will be a source of tremendous inspiration to your people and will continue to enliven the faithful and help to make them more conscious of their baptismal commitment as they seek to fulfill their own personal mission as disciples of Jesus in this diocese. We wish you the very best in all your endeavors. Now, I would like to read the papal decree appointing you as Bishop of St. Augustine. And of course, you know, this decree signed by the Holy Father will be shown by the Bishop himself to you. So don't worry, wait a little bit. Francis, Bishop, servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Eric Thomas Paul Meyer, from the clergy of the Diocese of Little Rock and until now pastor there of Christ the King Parish in Little Rock, as well as director of the offices of Deacon Formation and Faith Formation, appointed Bishop of St. Augustine, greetings and apostolic blessing. Indeed, the burden of bishops is greater than that of the faithful, but carried out well, it procures greater honor. While it is handled unfaithfully, it hurls one down into the most frightful punishment. This is a quotation from St. Augustine. Influenced by the seriousness of such sentiments, we continually weigh carefully the duty that is both ours by fulfilling ours and our, our brothers in the Episcopacy, which we take up each day as the yoke of the Lord by fulfilling faithfully and devotedly our commitments for the greater glory of God and the good of his holy people. Accordingly, we direct our thoughts to the Sea of St. Augustine, which, owing to the resignation of its most recent ordinary, our venerable brother Felipe de Jesus Esteves, is currently vacant and respectfully awaits a new chief shepherd. For this reason, it is with a paternal heart that we turn our attention to you, beloved son, who clearly display the required priestly qualities as well as pastoral zeal and charity towards the faithful. After deep consideration of these things, it is our desire to entrust you this office, which is of no little importance. Therefore, upon consultation with the congregation for bishops and in like manner, by virtue of our apostolic authority, we appoint you Bishop of St. Augustine, conferring upon you all the rights and imposing the obligations which belong to this mandate. As to your Episcopal ordination, you may receive it from a Catholic bishop anywhere outside the city of Rome, the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in this sea. We ask that you inform the faithful of your diocese, namely the clergy and the people, about our decision so that they may be able to offer you warm expressions of reverence and esteem. You heard that. Finally, beloved son, we commend you and your diocese to the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and to that of St. Augustine, invoking earnestly for both the light of the Holy Spirit while at the same time exhorting you, beloved son, paternally and cordially to nourish in faithfulness and in fervor the people entrusted to you with the food of the gospel. Given at Rome, at St. John the Lateran, on the 24th day of the month of May, in the year of the Lord 2022, the 10th of our pontificate, and it is signed Pope Francis. Thanks, dear God. Is installed. It's mission. Like this. 
No, 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 until he gets the, he has to be ordained first. St. Augustine, patron of this diocesan church, reminds us that the title bishop is not one of honor, but of service. We are grateful to God who inspires Bishop-elect Paul Meyer to generously assume the duties of a bishop to serve the people of this local church as a good and gentle shepherd of souls. The images of shepherds and sheep are found throughout the scriptures, and they offer us ample material for our reflections and prayer. However, in our modern and very urbanized society, the image of a shepherd might be a bit unfamiliar to many people. Once in the inner city parish where I served as a young priest, I asked some kids what a shepherd was. The gospel reading was about Jesus being the good shepherd. Now these kids never saw a sheep in their lives, much less a shepherd. And so most of them looked at me with blank stares. Until finally one young child raised his hand and said with great conviction, a shepherd is a mean dog. <laughs> the only shepherd he knew was that German shepherd down the street. <laughs> Now I guess with a name like Paul Meyer, your new bishop might be described as a German shepherd. <laughs> but whether your bishop happens to be Cuban or Irish, Polish, or German, we bishops 
are not supposed to be mean dogs. Although some would want us to be that way, nipping at the heels of our sheep. But neither should we be rady cats, as others sometimes accuse us of being. As the Lord promised his people to the prophet Jeremiah, I will appoint for you shepherds after my own heart, who will shepherd you wisely and prudently. Bishops must therefore be filled with the courage of humility, not asking what the prevailing opinion says about him, but following the criterion of God's truth and taking his stand accordingly, whether opportune or not. For each of us bishops, the call to the Episcopacy changed our lives totally in ways you have yet to imagine, Eric. And like the call to the priesthood itself, being called to be a bishop was a humbling and frankly an overwhelming experience. For each of us is keenly aware of our own unworthiness. So Eric, perhaps you also feel a bit overwhelmed and you might be asking yourself, how in the world did this happen? How in the world did I become a bishop? But don't worry, Eric, trust in God, follow the inspiration of your Episcopal motto and always seek first the kingdom of God. And with the grace of God, he'll do all right. (laughs) And besides, in a few years, he'll probably look around at his brother bishops and be tempted to ask, how in the world did they become bishops? (laughs) I know priests have asked that from time to time. (laughs) And speaking about the qualities that a candidate for the episcopacy should have, Pope Francis cited as common characteristics required of a bishop, professionalism, service, and holiness. But more importantly, he said that just as when the original apostles set out to replace Judas, they agreed that the next apostle be a witness to the resurrection. And so a bishop must know how to be a witness of Jesus' resurrection. The bishop is, Pope Francis says, first and foremost, a martyr for the risen one. His life and ministry must make the resurrection credible. And becoming one with Christ in the cross of the true gift of himself, he makes the life that never dies flow forth for his church. And for this reason, a bishop with the courage of humility must be, again in the words of Pope Francis, capable of fascinating the world with the beauty of love, with the freedom offered by the gospel. Now, this is perhaps more daunting than ever because of the relativism and the subjectivism which mar so much of our contemporary culture. 
indeed the ascendant secularism of our age, by closing its doors to the infinite and thus to the source of all hope, is changing how people perceive reality. leaving them confused as to why they live and how they should live their lives. It's changing the way we perceive reality. Just think of how secularism is changing the way we understand marriage or the family. And speaking about confusion, the relativism and subjectivism of our culture today makes it hard for people even to, even to recognize or identify who is a woman. This culture of the here and now leaves no room for openness to transcendence. And as people are tempted to live as if God doesn't matter, they become increasingly bereft of hope, thinking that they were created for nothing more than just to die one day. We see signs of this loss of hope all around us. We see it in some people's seemingly insatiable appetite for illegal drugs, for fleeting pleasures, or for elusive riches. Without hope, people do not make any enduring or lasting commitments to the future. They won't respond to the call of a religious or priestly vocation, or even to the call of a project called marriage and family. As seen in attempts to suppress religious freedom, a society which exiles God by reducing religion to the private and belief to merely subjective opinion expels hope from its midst. And while globalization has made us all neighbors, it certainly has not made us brothers and sisters to one another. The globalization of indifference increasingly closes our heart to the other, to the stranger, to the immigrant, was seen as a threat rather than a brother or sister to be embraced. It closes our hearts to the weak and the vulnerable, seeing them only as inconvenient nuisances. St. John Paul II wrote in Pastores Regis, that the bishop is to be the prophet, witness, and servant of hope, of that hope which will never disappoint, the hope that has a human face, Jesus Christ. In this way, all the flock entrusted to his care, but especially those whom the world would throw away those that would consider the least, the last, or the lost, will recognize in their bishop the voice of a true shepherd, calling them to the refreshing waters of faith. The liturgy of Episcopal ordination interprets the essential features of a bishop's ministry and the questions which I will shortly pose to you, Eric. Do you resolve? Do you resolve? I ask you eight times. 
a question that begins with that phrase, do you resolve? And each question solicits from you a statement of your intention, of your willingness to undertake what is being asked of you. And each question points out a path for you to follow in the exercise of your Episcopal ministry. And what is asked of you? What are those paths to be followed? You are asked, Eric, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to go ahead of and to lead God's people. You are asked to teach the sacred heritage of our past, to defend and promote the doctrinal unity of the faithful, to show mercy and charity to the needy and the poor. You are asked to pray without ceasing. These questions set before you a roadmap or an itinerary to be followed in the exercise of your Episcopal office. My dear people, the call to the order of bishop implies a complete abandonment to the mystery of the cross, to the mystery of love. It is a dying to self. Pope Francis says, the courage to die and the generosity to offer his life and to expend himself for the flock are inscribed in the DNA of the bishop. Renunciation and sacrifice are connatural with the mission of the bishop. And so to cite St. Augustine, your patron saint here in this church of northeastern Florida, to cite him once again, with you, he is a Christian. But for you, he is a bishop. We are not bishops for ourselves, but for you, for the church. And so I would ask you, my dear people of God, respect this new bishop. Love him and pray for him that his ministry among us will be fruitful. Amen. The ancient rule of the Holy Fathers decrees that the one to be ordained bishop should be questioned in the presence of the people concerning his resolve to guard the faith and to discharge this office. Therefore, my dear brother Eric Thomas, do you resolve to carry out until death with the grace of the Holy Spirit the office entrusted to us by the apostles and to be passed on to you through the laying on of our hands. I do. 
be resolved to proclaim the gospel of Christ faithfully and unfailingly. I do. Be resolved to guard the deposit of faith, pure and entire according to the tradition, preserved always and everywhere in the church from the time of the apostles. I do. Be resolved to build up the body of Christ, his church, and to remain in her unity with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of the blessed apostle Peter. I do. Be resolved to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed apostle Peter. I do. Be resolved as a devoted father to encourage the holy people of God and to guide them in the way of salvation together with the priests and deacons, your fellow ministers. I do. Be resolved for the sake of the Lord's name to reach out in kindness and mercy to the poor, to strangers, and to all those in need. I do. Be resolved as a good shepherd to seek out the sheep who stray and to gather them into the Lord's fold. I do. Be resolved to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for his holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach. I do, with the help of God. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us pray, dearly beloved, that the loving kindness of Almighty God, providing for the welfare of the church, will grant to this chosen one an, abundant, an abundance of his grace. Let us kneel. pet 
Perpetua and Saint Felicity. Graciously hear our petitions, O Lord, and as you raise the horn of priestly grace over this your servant, pour out upon him the power of your blessing, through Christ our Lord.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, who dwell on high and look upon the lowly, who know all things before they come to be, it is you who established the order in your church through your gracious word, who from the beginning predestined a righteous people born of Abraham, who instituted rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministry, who from the beginning of the world have been pleased to be glorified in those you have chosen. Now pour out, now pour forth upon this chosen one the power that is from you, the governing spirit whom you gave to your beloved son, Jesus Christ, and whom he gave to the holy apostles who established the church in each place as your sanctuary to the glory and unfailing praise of your name. Grant, O Father, knower of all hearts, that this your servant, whom you have chosen for the episcopate, may nourish your holy flock and may without reproach exercise before you the high priesthood, serving you night and day, that he may unceasingly cause your face to shine upon us and to offer the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the strength of the spirit of the high priesthood, he may have authority to forgive sins according to your command that he may apportion offices according to your precept and loosen every bond according to the authority you gave the apostles. May he be pleasing to you in meekness and purity of heart, offering a sweet fragrance to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. May God, who have made, ha, has made you a sharer in the high priest of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessing.
receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, and adorned with undefiled faith, preserve unblemished the bride of Christ, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre, and let the splendor of holiness shine in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may merit to receive an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of the pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as bishop to govern the church of God. Okay, come with me. your place. Stay here for a moment. Peace be with you, brother. Good luck.
We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you, 
Also, for me, your unworthy servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of bishops, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in me, so that what I have received by divine commission I may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through to Christ our Lord. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
en Cristo Salvador.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
I've told many people that my primary emotion since that call on May 15th has been gratitude. Gratitude that has worked its way into every corner of my life. Gratitude that I am reminded of every time I have received a note or a well wish. Gratitude because God keeps reminding me this is about Him. This is about the work that He has set before us. So this is my chance now to express that gratitude to some specific groups and some people. Now obviously there are many more people to thank than I can name, but here are some. Some that stand out for me as reminders that this is the work of God. People who have been a part of my life all along and have shaped me for this moment, have prepared me to be able to respond when God calls. And so I am grateful that God has included each of you and so many more. People who have been praying for me that I will meet in the years to come. First of all, I thank our Holy Father Francis for entrusting me with this historic part of the church, with his confidence that I can carry on the work entrusted to the apostles. I am deeply humbled to be chosen to take my part in the ministry of reaching God's people in every part of the kingdom. I am grateful also to Archbishop Pierre for that call to give the news. But also, not just for that call, but for a couple of opportunities since then for reassurance, encouragement. We had a meeting of all of the bishops in San Diego, and so at dinner, and now in the couple of days that we have been here, a chance to be reminded that this is the work of God. And so thank you for carrying that message and, and for the way that you carry it, for the reassurance that you give to so many of us that you have called over the years. I want to say thanks to Archbishop Wenske. Thank you for your role today. Thank you for giving me this privilege to take my place in the apostolic succession given by our Lord Jesus. Thank you for reminding me that it is possible to be German and gentle at the same time. <laughs> I want to say thank you to the co-consecrators, to Bishop Estevez, a co-consecrator today, and my new friend, someone I spoke to a lot in those days that I was under the secret and couldn't tell anybody else. He was very anxious to talk in those days, it seemed. <laughs> but I am grateful for your kindness, for your excitement during this transition. You have been reassuring to me, and I look forward to many future conversations and not just ones where I'm asking you more questions about what I don't know, though those will surely come. But as I have had said to me many times by bishops who know you well, there is a great depth of your heart that I look forward to seeing more and more. I pray for the same love and affection for the people of this diocese that you have shown. And Bishop Taylor, you were the first person I got to talk to after that call, the one person who already knew before I did and was waiting for that call. It was a great help to me to be able to speak out loud what seemed surreal and not even really possible in my head. I'm grateful for your encouragement, for your generosity, your, the time that you took on that day. But also, I want to thank you for your time as my bishop in Arkansas. You have given me an example of what it means to be a fearless witness of Christ for his poor and neglected, to truly live with the kind of love for those that others do not see. You have also shown me what it really looks like to seek the approval of God and God alone. 
And I thank you for being so honest and sharing that and finding the consolation that comes from God when it is God alone that we seek to please. To all the bishops who have come here to pray with me, to all the bishops around the country who have welcomed me, that was one of the great surprises of those early days. I started to receive letters from bishops around the country. And the most consistent comment that I received from the bishops was their own experience of the power of prayer. They spoke to me in their letters about how tangible it was to feel the prayer of the people of God. And I can confirm that I have felt in a tangible way that support that comes from prayerful intercession. In specific form, I believe that it is that constant reminder that allows me to see God above all so that whatever whirlwind of emotions might be happening in my life, that God is there reminding me again and again, this is about me, not about you. To my brother priests, I want to say thank you. To all of the priests from Arkansas, many of you who are here today, you have been my brothers in so many ways. We have shared a lot and you have inspired me. You have challenged me and you have shared joys and many laughs. I treasure the times that we have together. I treasure the fact that I was able to come and visit you in your parishes and to see the love that you have for God's people. It is that inspiration that I carry with me, that inspiration that I will hold forever grateful. To my classmates and priests from the North American College, you who shaped me in my early days of formation, we have shared many journeys and much prayer. I cherish your friendship. I remember fondly the ideals that we talked about, the desire to serve God, and I find great comfort in watching the ways that God has worked in your midst and for the continued friendship and support that you give to me. To the priests of this diocese that I am beginning to know, I'm grateful that you took time on short notice to gather so that we could have at least a couple of hours of prayer together, a chance to talk a little bit, to share a first meal. As I told you in my press conference, I have been watching your homilies, and as I have gotten to know you, my respect for the work you do has only increased, and so I pray for the good work that we will do together. To my family, no amount of time is enough to be able to say thank you to you. In fact, there isn't even time to say all of your names. <laughs> so let me start by saying thank you to mom and dad. You have formed a family of faith. You who have built this foundation that the rest of us have relied on who have been the primary ones, not just in our early years, not just in my early years, but throughout my life, in my years of priesthood, continuing to shape and form in a way that only mom and dad can. To all of you, my siblings, my in-laws, you who have built on the foundation of faith that we have been given, it is evident as I see this develop in the lives of your own children. You inspire me every day as I watch the seeds of faith bloom in your children. And you give me lots of homily material, and I will always be grateful for that. <laughs> and so I love you, and I anticipate the many joys that we will continue to share as we watch the seeds of foundations that continue to grow and bear fruit in the lives of all of my nieces and nephews so dear to me. To my friends and the faithful that I have served in Arkansas, you have in so many ways shaped my life. In my first years as a priest and throughout the 24 years that I have been with you, you have shared your lives with me. You have 
given me the sense that the great joy, the great privilege of priesthood is that shared life. In you, I have seen the face of God. In you, I have learned new ways to love. As you have drawn me in, have looked to me for comfort, provided comfort to me, be assured that I will always pray for you. To the people of the Diocese of St. Augustine, I've been working very hard to get the difference between Augustine and Augustine right, and so I'll keep working on it. Your excitement has made me very ready to get started. My whirlwind two days have given me a lot of anticipation for coming to be with you. You have helped me take note that God has long been at work here, and I can't wait to be a part of it. Now, you have sent me notes and have encouraged me in many ways, and so again, I cannot single out many people, but I want to take particular note of the planning committee for this event. In my whirlwind of events, I was whisked into a meeting that was already planning for this day, and they began asking me questions that made it clear you had already immediately began to formulate what it would look like to celebrate an event of faith to be a people of hospitality. And so to all of you who have planned details that I couldn't even imagine, you have put in many hours on top of details while my, while my head was still spinning. I've seen updates and been amazed at the generosity, the outpouring of all of you who have planned for this Mass, for the events around these days, for the welcome of all of my family and friends, your attentiveness to those of who have traveled, your hospitality reflects the very love of Jesus. And so I am thankful for all that you have done, all that this celebration will do to plant seeds of faith that we can continue to work and build in the years to come. And to everyone in Northeast Florida, everyone who is here, everyone who is watching on the various live stream, I look forward to meeting you. In the next week, I will have Mass in each of the deaneries of this diocese with a chance to celebrate what is most important in our lives of faith around the altar, and then a chance to begin greeting you, getting to know you, celebrating the work of God in our midst. I'm scheduling more visits rapidly, already getting the dates for confirmations and so many other dates on my calendar. And so very soon, I will be able to come and celebrate with you more personally. Please pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in these first months as we get to know each other, as the excitement that we feel can turn into a concrete faith that we can build on for God's kingdom. After Mass, I will begin to be able to greet you as I take a few moments for pictures with my family and then make my way to our reception where I can begin to say hello more personally. As Jesus says, the harvest is abundant. I come to you as a new apostle, and so I echo the words of the Master and say, the harvest is indeed abundant here in our midst. There is much to do. He has always sent his people to gather in that harvest, and so now, as he sends me, I call on you. Listen to the voice of Jesus. If you are young and imagining your future, be sure that Jesus has something to say about it. Listen to him. You cannot go astray. You will find the greatest joy and meaning in the adventure of life when you listen to his call and follow. We will continue to promote vocations, but I want to make it clear as well that listening to God to guide our life is not only for the young, but for all of us. If you are settled into a life, Jesus has more for you to do. The harvest is abundant. And you are one of the workers of that harvest. The work of evangeliz evangelization belongs to us all. 
We have good news to share. And so in the end of my comments today, I seek the intercession of the family of God that we are privileged to share, this reminder that God is indeed transcendent because those who have gone before us not only give us an example to follow, but they pray for us, they work with us, they help to accomplish the work of God. And so St. Augustine, pray for us. Keep our hearts restless as we bring souls to Christ. Say, Mary Magdalene, pray for us. You announce the resurrection. Help us to boldly proclaim the risen Christ and come to see him reign. Our Lady of La Leche, pray for us. On these shores, you have always pointed us to your Son. Speak to us now with a mother's heart. Help us walk with Jesus in courage and compassion. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. O God, who care for your people with gentleness and rule them in love, endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom you have handed on authority to govern, that they may fl- that from the flourishing of a holy fo- flock may come eternal joy in its shepherds. Amen. Amen. As in your majestic power you allot the number of our days and the measure of our years, look favorably upon our humble service and confer on our time the abundance of your peace. Amen. Give a happy outcome to the tasks that through your grace you have laid upon me, whom you have raised to the rank of bishop. Make me pleasing to you in the fulfillment of my duties, and so guide the hearts of people and pastor that the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherd, nor the care of the shepherd be lacking for the flock. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.